Hey guys, it's Tyler, long time no see. Uh, I wanted to talk about this idea that seems to keep coming back and nobody seems to have the answers to it, but I think it's it's got a pretty simple answer that I, I just, I don't know why I haven't seen anyone talk about it. And that is the conundrum of how do we play a character that is entirely removed from ourselves? Um... You know, the, the classic, well, I'm not a genius, but I'm playing a character who's a genius. How do I represent that? Um, and sometimes you can run into issues where you pretend to have knowledge that you don't, and it ends up being inaccurate, and your character, who's supposed to be smart, says something dumb, and then you can get into this dumb retconning, you know, back and forth thing where one of the people at the table, maybe they are, you know, a nuclear physicist or something, or, a, you know, a nuclear safety officer at a, at a university or something. And, you know, your character that's supposed to be a, a nuclear scientist is, you know, says something. And then they go, well, hang on, that's not right. That's not how that works. <laughs> and you can play that in character. But if the mechanics of the game indicate that, no, you succeeded at your, you know, physicsing role or whatever... Um, and you just make some something up on the spot that doesn't make any sense. Now we have a problem. Even if the other person at the table is being a good sport and they don't mention anything about it, it still kind of ruins the experience for them because then they're not thinking about the game anymore. Now they're thinking, well, that's stupid. That's not how that would actually work. And now their brains, you know, the, they're totally focused on something else. So how do we deal with that? Do we make, you know, everybody that's going to play a uh, scientist in a game, do we make them read a bunch of scientific papers? <laughs> no, that's not the outcome that I think. And then in a video that Shauna recently did responding to, um, I don't remember the name of his channel, Guy, uh, he says, oh, your next character should be yourself. I, should it? I I think that's fun to do every once in a while to play yourself in a game, but I don't know that necessarily if that's your first time role playing, you learn a lot from that. The main thing that I would say that people need to have in order to play a character that has some expert skills or some expert knowledge that the player themselves doesn't have is tacit knowledge. If you don't know the difference between tacit knowledge and practical knowledge, tacit knowledge is effectively you know how something would be done theoretically. You don't know how to do it yourself. I'll give you a personal example. I know how a sword would be forged by a swordsmith. I've never done that myself, and if I tried to do so myself, I would completely screw it up. But I know from watching videos of people smithing, or from watching movies with decent smithing stuff, if you know, and that depends on our social contract, you know, how, how grounded are we doing it? Are we making cast aluminum swords like you always see in the movies for some reason? then, okay, that's fine. I, all, all I'll need to do is do some film study. And that's that's how you gain that tacit knowledge. You don't need to read, you know, tons of scientific papers and then go out and, you know, all right, I'm going to actually just start smithing my sword. No, just, just watch or even just think about a few scenes in movies or comic books, TV shows, uh, whatever, whatever your preferred medium is and think about, uh, you know, pay attention to what they're doing. Look at, you're making a smithing character, maybe watch some uh, Forged in Fire and then take out all of the modern tools, you know, take out the power hammers, take out the blow torches, or maybe think of how magic in your world comes up with different solutions to the problem of hit something with a hammer over and over again, that's time consuming. Uh, yeah, it, it really shouldn't be that 
as complicated as this question is, and it's very confusing to me that it keeps coming up over and over again, right? I don't need to be a blacksmith. All I need to know is steel until the 1800s was really hard to produce. It's trial and error. What are ways that steel can fail? Well, steel can, it can be too soft. It can be too hard and brittle. It can delaminate if I'm, you know, you can learn all of this from a 15 minute video, right? I feel like if people are putting in, you know, the 8 million years of role playing they're doing, apparently, you know, the, the, the people that have been role playing since they were toddlers, but they still struggle with this issue of, you shouldn't play a character that has knowledge you don't have, or how to play a character with, you know, they way overcomplicate it, or pigeonhole people into just playing the same characters over and over again, because, well, you're not a wizard, you wouldn't have knowledge of how the magic works. Okay, tacit knowledge, right? Look at your Navancian spellcasting system if you're playing Dungeons & Dragons, read The Dying Earth, it's only 100 pages. If you don't want to read that, read the, you know, wiki entry on how the magic in the dying earth works. You know, and, and that, that'll cut out two things. You don't have to constantly stop and go, would my character know how the magic in this world? Well, you're shooting fire out of your hands and you have been doing so for five, six more sessions now. You've presumably been doing so for a decent amount of your character's adult life. I figured they'd know. There's another solution if you're not running like a written in stone system where the magic is much lighter and the explanation behind the magic is effectively, it's magic, don't ask me questions. The answer there can be roll high on your, you know, magic knowledge here, your knowledge arcane skill or what have you. Okay, now player, you get to make up whatever is correct in this world. And then we have sort of active world building going on. You know, uh, and you don't necessarily want to make this a back and forth middle of the session, you know, where, uh, oh, you know, nat 20, uh, knowledge arcane. And then the GM just goes, well, I don't know, you tell me, because that's a weird place. You, you need to have that, that you're doing that preordained b before everything's gone on to go, okay, I'll give you the target number. If you succeed, give me a, give me some fact about this. And that's actually a way I'm trying to design knowledge in the game I'm working on, is that the more you succeed, the better and more relevant the knowledge becomes. So, you know, you roll really high on a monster you've never seen before and a monster that doesn't have, you know, this big pre-written stat block. And this solves two problems. You can't metagame because there's not this big pre-written stat block. And that character just knows stuff, right? Whatever the player makes up in the moment, that becomes true. So if they roll, you know, a full success very high, they can think of a fact about this, you know, giant bug that has these weird tentacly appendages and uh, lifts rocks with its mind. It's also psionic, apparently. They can come up with those that I've, I've seen these things before or read about them in a book. They're weak to fire, you know, and we've got plenty of torches. Everybody just, you know, start jamming torches at it, throw, you know, throw your alcohol on it. Let's get it covered in fire. There you go. There's a convenient knowledge. If they weigh fail on the other end, now you put them on the spot. All right, you know something about this is that is inconvenient, such that they are actually very resistant to fire. Or, um, in fact, they are not animals that are easily scared away. This is some eldritch abomination that is a, uh, a symptom of a much larger problem. And that way, the players get to drive the story forward even if it's in a negative way, or they get to, you know, the, the basis of it is they get to incorporate their characters into the world. Their characters know things about the world. Even if it's negative, even, no matter what the result of the die is, it represents that their character is somebody that lives in that world. 
there's a touch on the fantasy aspect where, of course, we can't really do... We can do film study to get ideas, but we can't get it to get, um, you know, real-world examples as we can with smithing or nuclear physics or whatever. That's pretty much it. You know, tacit knowledge is the basis of everything. You want your characters to have the ability to work off of the tacit knowledge that you, the player, has. I'm not going to ask anyone... Well, I will actually ask them, but I'm not going to require that uh, anyone that wants to play a, a fighter or, you know, any sort of martial character that uses, you know, melee weapons join one of my uh, historical European martial arts classes. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. What I will request is that have an idea of how a sword is swung around. Have an idea because I like to run things more groundedly. Even in fantasy, I like it to be grounded in the fantasy. They wouldn't be wearing full plate if you could just cut clean through it. So, you know, when you're describing your own successes, unless you're some superhumanly strong person or you've got a sword that's, you know, made of some crazy metal like adamantine or it's just um, enchanted to be insanely sharp, sharper than it, a normal sword physically could be, I, I don't want you, you know just cutting straight through people's arms while they're in full plate because <laughs> now you've created a problem. Well, why are people wearing full plate if you can just cut clean through it, right? It doesn't make it wouldn't make any sense. So just understand the context. Use logic within the world. You don't have to know exactly the biomechanics of, you know, loading your hips up to deliver a powerful strike to the side. And then maybe a false edge cut to the head. And then you thrust through the eye slit. You know, you just need to know, yeah, I'm aiming for the weak points in the guy's armor. It's that simple. You don't need to overcomplicate it. Maybe it's because people over-describe. Maybe that's what it is. The more you describe, the more you are relying on being accurate to your knowledge as well. So don't, you know, don't dig your own grave as far as descriptions go. Keep it short. Keep it simple. I'm aiming at his weak points. If you're skilled, right? If your character's not skilled at fighting, you know, say whatever <laughs> say whatever you want. You know, I try to just hack straight through the guy's arm that's covered in plate. <laughs> well, yeah, your character tries to do that because he doesn't he doesn't know anything. Um, and then the outcome is going to be very different than what his attempt was. Hopefully that helps. You know, I'm trying to get back into making videos. My camera stopped working this week. I just now got it fixing it. Uh, fixing. I just now got it working fixed today. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be making some more videos, organizing things in the back. My house is a mess, getting uh, things organized for Christmas decorations, got the tree put up. Uh, maybe a change of scenery is due, but yeah. Um, let me know what you guys think. Is this a topic that you were likewise confused as to why people were confused on it or... Uh, was this video helpful? Do I have some arcane esoteric knowledge on the subject that was not previously available? Sorry, I heard weird sounds in the background. I'm gonna go now. <laughs>